today I wake up with the possibilities of future. We are young once more. We are flirting. And I remind him how years ago we kissed in the last row of the old cinema. And then he broke my heart. Now he's humble. And it suits him, this new face of his. He says he can't remember me. He broke so many girls' hearts. That I meant nothing to him saddens me. But it excites me too. Knowing all that we now know. And yet still being so very young. We can start afresh. We have our lives before us. We'll make no mistakes this time. Me and this stranger in my dream. Sorry, six maximum. You read any of these? Uh... Yep. This one. Any good? What I mean is... Is it a happy ending? I think so, yeah. Yeah. buttons to the op shop for someone else to find. The shells back to the beach and the wool you keep to make a bedspread. This will take a long time. Something to look forward to. And at the end, it will keep you warm too. What puzzles her most is the fact she hasn't thought about him much. Not since she was 15. Except for that one time later, when he came to get her. Why is she dreaming about him now? In her dreams, he's making her feel warm and safe. He speaks to her of lost love and of her being too late. 
He personifies her longings. He has the kind face of her loneliness. His name is Stephen. Her family lived in the house next door to his. And it was where she wanted to be. It was a special place. Mrs. Johnson? Do they like living in Adelaide? I think so. Because of the grandchildren. But you must miss them. Still, you've got all your friends here. Yeah. Oh, Alan. We heard about the accident. Yeah, thanks. Your friend who died, I'm so sorry. Thank God you're all right. Yeah, I'm all right. You poor thing. Have you heard from Stephen lately? Is that rope at Trees Lawn? Yes, it's still there. Well, you remember it. Stephen knew I love rope. It's it always bring me some. Oh, how sweet. Thank you for the tea, Mrs. Johnson. It was just lovely to see you again, dear. Give my love to your parents. You must be the beautiful Ellen. Who are you? Martin. I'm Martin. Baby Martin. Well, I've grown up a bit. <laughs> How did you recognize me? I've got your photograph on my wall. It came with the bungalow when I inherited it from my brother, so I, I kept it. That's amazing. Of course, what, you 22 now? 24, nearly. Do you still dance? You weren't even two when we moved out. I saw you once when I was older. But... Well... It's great seeing you. You were visiting my mum. Do you live nearby? And then I did psychology and, and halfway through that I wanted to do literature, so I did, and, and then philosophy, so now I'm majoring in those. Literature and philosophy? Mm. That's the kind of thing one finds a job easily. <laughs> well, there's more things in life than money. And what about you, Nikki? Are you studying too? Yes. What are you studying? Media studies. Nikki's doing uh, film as art in the 20th century. She's cool. What I really want to do, though, is write. That's what I want to do. Yeah? Mm. What about? Brothers, relationships, life, manhood, that kind of thing. Nice to meet you, Nikki. All the best. Thanks. It was a really nice surprise. All the best. You've got your whole life ahead of you. I'll bring you some locusts when they're right. <laughs>
during winter that I call out for him the most, when I'm cold. I shut my eyes and feel his arms around me, to feel warm. And then I tell him how it used to be before he came along. Knowing tonight again, he will warm my bed. She followed their rhythm, the heartbeat of the ballerinas. China dolls from a similar mold. Same hair, you know, up not too high or low, sitting in a bun. Straight postures, long necks, thin long fingers. And the feet, those powerful little feet. The holiness, the mystery of them hidden inside worn out shoes. She wanted to be one of them, a ballerina. Four. Oh, we had a postcard from Alan, from England. His daughter had the baby, a seven pound baby boy. They named him Stephen. He sends his love and he says he misses everyone. The card is on the board. We had some news from Glenys too. The sun rang. The hip was getting better, but there were some other complications. She won't be back with us again. Now you look after yourself. You're precious, you know. Oh, sorry, love. That's okay. Beautiful music. You like? Greek music. Elinida, you say? Elinida, you say? Bravo, Harika. Harika, you go. Oh, yes, yes. Goose. <laughs> 
sounds like she's got old timer's disease. I thought you might be here. It's spring. I know. It's like a drug I've been walking around like a zombie, like I'm in love for the first time. But you are in love. Yeah, I guess I am. Are you? Only with the characters in the novels I read. Ones with happy endings. And the people that visit me in my dreams, most of whom I don't even know. Do you dream about me? No, I <laughs> don't. I've dreamt about your brother. Is that why you came that day? You broke his heart. Have you been writing? <laughs> okay. This one, Stephen tells me in the dream, is rare and very beautiful. But this, a majestic black bird flies in circles around us is like an evil omen. He tries to shoo it outside the open windows. Then, we put our lips together and taste each other's kisses. And I tell him, that's how love tasted when we were children. It left a sour, sweet aftertaste, like locusts. Okay.
it's during spring that I call out for him the most. When I'm in love. With no one to love. I'm 39 today. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Ellen. Going to the beach with some friends of mine. I said I'd pick you up and meet them down there. Well, look, take your girlfriend. So young and beautiful pretends to be so tough. Nikki and I broke up a couple of weeks ago. I'm sorry. I like Nikki really. Yeah, me too. It's okay. I wasn't the one for her, and she wasn't the love of my life. We're still good friends. Look, Martin, the stove hasn't been cleaned in years. I've got to clean the oven. Oh, come on, it's like summer out there. It's too cold, I can't swim. You don't have to swim. You can look for shells or something. Hmm? Wait. It's awesome. It's a bit chilly when you first get in, but you get used to it. One day your mum had to go away, very suddenly. And she got Stephen and me to look after you. And I was holding you and I was pushing you in your pram. I was trying everything to shut you up. <laughs> Meanwhile, Stephen was warming up your milk like June had told him and mashing you a banana or something. And, uh, I think we were pretending that you were our baby. <laughs> you were a beautiful baby. Finally, we just stuck you in front of the TV and we left you there. And when we came back, you'd fallen asleep.
thought you might like to know that Steve's getting married. I don't know where you get this idea that I broke your brother's heart. Or that somehow I would be interested in the fact that he's getting married. I knew your brother 25 years ago, okay? Now, the last time I saw him would have been... Jesus, I don't know. It was a strange time for me. He turned up, he left. That was 16 years ago. You were just a kid. What do you know about me? Did you clean the stove? No. <laughs> no. Did he ring? Yeah, he rang. He spoke to Rose, too. You know, sometimes I think that I'm the one that's older. He acts like such a kid sometimes. Would you like a beer? Yeah. I know a little bit about you. I know that you are beautiful. I'm not. not that you're not anymore. That's a matter of opinion. I know that you were a dancer. And I know that my brother somehow thought you and him were going to get married one day. Listen. Your brother was this naive, romantic kid. He made all these promises before he disappeared. He turns up nine years later expecting us to get married, just like that. I was living with someone else. And how many times in your life have you seen your brother? I saw him that one time he came to Melbourne when I was nine. And then when I finished year 12, I took a year off and we traveled around Australia together. I spent most of that year with him. So he told you about me. We spoke a little bit about you. And what about Rose? Oh, this was before Rose. I think it was Jocelyn then. I was, wasn't so sure about her. This one sounds serious, eh? Yeah. Good luck to them. Yeah. I know that you were in an accident that nearly killed you. And I know that your lover died. You still haven't told me what you want from me. Nothing. I was like an only child, you know, I'd heard so much about him. He was my hero, my big brother, my big half-brother. The apple of my mother's eye. And then suddenly he turns up one day. And he starts talking to me about the world and about the future, his future with this girl that he was in love with. And how he'd tracked her down and he knew where she was and what she was up to and how we were gonna go and find her. It was the best thing that ever happened to me, him. And we arrived at this hilly street full of trees outside this derelict mansion. And when we got to the front door, which was already open, Steve turned to me and he said, stay there. Whatever you do, don't come inside. You were there? I didn't see you. He didn't say anything. I was very disappointed. I couldn't come in with him, but I waited. I waited for a long time. And then I decided to go in and I walked down this corridor and I got to this big room. And the first thing that hit me about this room was the darkness. I couldn't understand why people wouldn't open their curtains up and let the sun shine in in the middle of the day. And I started to make these bodies out, these people in black. You know how it was, the women had pale faces and big black eyes. They looked evil. Some of them were evil. There was a guy vomiting in the corner and I'm pretty sure there was people putting needles in their arms. And I turned around and I walked back out and I walked down the corridor. 
and I got to this smaller room and I heard screams and there was this girl she would have been no older than 16 and she was kneeling on the ground and there was this guy on top of her And I looked down at these nude bodies and the girl screaming from pleasure or pain, I still don't know. And I thought I'd turned away, but I found myself face to face with a guy. And he just grinned at me. And I turned and I ran and I ran like I was being chased by him. And I ran all the way outside and Steve was there. And it was all happening very quickly. And we jumped in the car and we started to drive off. And I looked back one last time. And that's when I saw you. You were standing in the light of the door and your hair was down. You looked like an angel. You don't like me. It's the opposite. It's because I like you too much. I'm going away for Christmas to see my family in Adelaide. For how long? Four, six weeks, maybe. I'll come and see you before you go. I've got to go. A woman is crippled as much as she thinks she wants to. She's unable to love. The guy I saw screwing that day, it was him. Horse. He was your boyfriend, wasn't he? Why did you stay with a sleazy guy like that? He knew how to sweep you off your feet. <laughs> but that's not it. After the initial attraction, after he's broken your heart a thousand times, you think you don't find him attractive anymore. Attracted to the pain. Why? The only explanation I can come up with is if a person is full of self loathing and they're addicted to self destruction. Doesn't make sense. 
Let's just say it was a disappointment at home. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Martin, I do think about Stephen, how he came for me. But even if I lived another lifetime or I was that young again, I'd still deny him the same all over. He was a tow truck driver, for God's sake. Why should I? I thought it was too good for him. You see, I was living with a bunch of creative, talented people. Artists, musicians, actors, wankers. You saw us. Your brother was on about marriage and children, but I don't know what else. I had my dance, I was choreographing, I was getting grants. God, I thought I was set for life. I even thought horse had every right to fuck whoever he wanted in our house because he was such a talented painter. Man, I laughed at your brother. I told him to get real. There was no such thing as true love or happiness or goodness in this world. And that I never wanted to have children. Which wasn't true. I told him I was in love with someone else. That's it. Honestly, I haven't thought about him in years. It's just that now I'm dreaming about him. And it's almost always the same. Sometimes it's in other lifetimes, different countries, different languages. And I wake up with such grief. Like it's somehow all too late. You know, I don't even dream about dancing. If I hadn't been so young, I would have talked you into coming. We could have been together now. It's not Stephen I dream about. That's what he's come to stand for. It's really about me. You should be in love, Ellen. You look like a woman who should be in love. Oh, yeah? And what does she look like? I just want to go to bed at night and fall asleep immediately. That would be happiness. Can I come over? No, it's too late. Good night, Martin. Dear Mum, a friend has asked me to spend the holidays at Phillip Island. I'm very sorry to miss seeing the family. Please give my love to everyone and have a happy Christmas. P.S. I'm sending little Nina some of my old dancing things. I thought she might like to have them. All my love, Eleanor. Imagine my surprise, Stephen. 
when I discovered your baby brother is now a man. during summer that I call out to him the most, when it's hot and I feel like making love. How was it? Adelaide. Mm. It's still there.
dance with you. What are you talking about? You know, like two people do, slowly. Like chickens, cheek to cheek. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have music. I am the music, and I write the words. <laughs> no, you don't. You wouldn't know. It's before your time. It's something that goes round and round. It's called a record player, and it plays records. Mm -hmm. You've got records? Yeah. Blondie, Iggy Pop, hmm. Sex Pistols, David Bowie, old fashioned stuff. It's not so old fashioned. Any chicken dancing stuff? <laughs> Some chicken dancing stuff. Where did I put it? Something else. What is it? I don't know. It's wrapped in a white sheet. Well, have a look. It's a clock. Very old, antique. It's horses. Leave it there, we'll nail the lid shut. Does it work? Yeah, it works. It's very noisy. Well, what do you want me to do with it? Get it down and put it straight in your car. Do you know anyone who'd like it? Yeah. Nikki would. She loves stuff like this. Good. Give it to Nikki. Put it in your car. Yeah, I'll do it later. No, now while I'm cleaning this. You still see Nikki? I told you. We're still good friends. The group of us went away for Christmas. I'd say she's still in love with you. I just can't. 
Why? Is it because of me? It's not. It's not you. You're perfect. It's because of Stephen. No, it's not Stephen. It's me. Well, maybe I pushed you into it. It's got nothing to do with you. You know what? I don't believe you. I think it has got something to do with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Was it broken? Yeah. Yeah. My arm. Yes. My womb. It's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I never want to hurt you. Maybe you should just go. Maybe I should go. She likes stories. Stories make sense. They have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And she can see the journey and understand it. But as she's in the middle of her story, and her life has been a collection of wrong turns and choices, to tell the truth, she's not very hopeful of a happy ending. What's this? A bed spray. Looks like a scarf. I know. No. Present. Open it. Great. That's what I need from you, Ellen. Presents. You can be my sugar mummy. If that simple, it'd be perfect, eh? Hey? I know you've probably got a computer or something like that. But I thought, you know, for ideas or something, it might come in handy. That's great. Dancing made me happy. I want you to be happy too. Well, I'll have to stop procrastinating and start writing then. Maybe I'll write this story of the, the boy who fell in love with the beautiful angel the day he lost his innocence so that one day he might be inspired to write the story of the boy who fell in goes around in circles. And then you die, eh? Hey? I've got some news. I'm the messenger. Hermes, the god of healing. Leader of the souls to the underworld. It's Stephen. He's broken up with Rose. And he's booked himself into an anti-depression clinic in Cairns. He doesn't want to talk to anyone. I've got the address. Can I have it? I wrote it down for you. That's 
that's not what you think. But I know him. I've been through that. I know what it's like. Your brother and I are the same. And I hope, I really hope you're not this lost this late in your life. It's not my fault I'm young. I love you. Dear Stephen, I can't believe I'm sitting here writing to you. She put her whole life into the letter. She took great pains to tell him her story. At the beginning, she said, there was only darkness. But later there's this tiny flicker of hope. She begged him to hang on. It made sense to her suddenly. All that she knew about pain was so she could save him. Because he was part of her. Because he needed her. And if she saved him, she could save herself. She made him promise that he would write. during autumn that I call out to him the most, for now and for all the seasons to come. Ellen, he's not here. How are you? He's left the clinic and no one knows where he is. I wish I was born the day you were born. I wish I was your first love. But I wish I was Nikki. But most of all, I wish I were my friend. I wish you were happy. Come inside. No, I gotta go. 
I'm finally getting around to finishing that stove. I've done everything else. Next time you come around, it'll be done, I promise. I'd give you a lift, but Nikki's coming. Bitch. We're just good friends. Yeah, right. Come and see me sometime. I'll bring you some locusts. Tell me a story. Thanks for everything. In one time, I dreamt my whole life. I dreamt the feelings of hope which came with youth. The joy of dancing and my first bicycle ride. I saw the face of disappointment, which leads to being disappointed with oneself. The guilt passed on to me by my parents' sadness. The loss of their old country. In that one time, I went through the sorrow of my first heartbreak. I felt the blind faith in the power of love. I felt again both lost and purified. In my life's dream, things became suddenly clear. And in an instant, I knew why I did the things I did. Why, for instance, I got into the car with horse when I saw death in the distance. Why I couldn't cry for me. And I said to the dreamer, I have been writing this story for a whole year now. Then Horse came and said, You've been writing this story your whole life. And you forget the time you spend unconscious and in semi-existence. Driving for days. <laughs> Can I crash at you? Sure. You still keep your dreams in your bedroom, Elena. Do you still bite your nails, Stephen?
In the stories we tell, we choose our own endings. But at night when I call him back, Alan, Alan, Alan I call. I call my own name. Ανοίχτες πόρτες και παράθυρα Μπαίνουν και βγαίνουνε φαντάσματα Σε ρήμους δρόμους ακούγονται φωνές Μια μοναξιά γραμμένη οι ζωές Κι εγώ που νόμιζα πως είχα πια πεθάνει Βγάζω και πάλι τη ζωή μου στο Σεριάνι. Σαν υπνοβάτης περπατώ σιγά σιγά Να μην ξυπνήσω τις πληγές από παλιά Ανοίχτες πόρτες και παράθυρα Πένθουν ψυχές με στα χαράματα Ο ήλιος δίνει το τραγούδι στα πουλιά Και εσύ μου δένεις μαύρες κορδέλες στα μαλλιά Κι εγώ που νόμιζα πως είχα πια πεθάνει Βγάζω και πάλι τη ζωή μου στο Σεριάνι Σαν υπνοβάτης περπατώ σιγά, σιγά Να μην ξυπνήσω τις πληγές από παλιά Thank you. 